Hi everyone, GW Fox here. Welcome to the Model Gaming Show. Uh, busy show tonight, so I want to dig right in to new video game releases. Um, we got two heavy hitters releasing the same day in January. Usually January, February, March are kind of, eh, late March is not slow, but March is kind of slow. But um, we got two of the biggest games of the year. Um, one of them is one of my most anticipated. Um, so first, both releasing on Friday, you got Dragon Ball Fighters um, by uh, Arcworks, I think it is. Uh, they created this, um, got the look of the show exactly. It's like playing the show, which I really dig. Um, currently has an 87 on Open Critic right now. Really dang good. And with an even better rating, Monster Hunter World with a 91. Um, that's pretty incredible. Uh, both these games look fantastic. I've never played a Monster Hunter game. I've always wanted to, um, and it looks like so fun on, on Xbox and PS4, but most of the people I know have a PS4. I have an Xbox. And uh, with my foray into PC gaming, I kind of want to play it on PC to get the best experience. And it's releasing sometime, they think, in August. So I think I might just wait. I know it's the new hotness right now, but I, I'm more inclined to pick up uh, Dragon Ball Fighter sooner than later um, to discuss those. But two of the biggest games of the year, end of January, um, it, they, they both look incredible. Uh, there's not much more I can say. Uh, if you're a fighting game fan, Fighters looks like an incredible experience. And if you're just like an action RPG fan at all, or just, just just want to play what looks to be an excellent game and is reviewing really well, then check out Mon Monster Hunter as well. Um, a couple of news stories that happened this week that I just want to touch on kind of quickly and then dig into the main stories. Uh, the first is that um, it was released that Minecraft in the month of December still has 74 million active users. <laughs> that blows my mind. I've never touched Minecraft. It came free with my copy of Windows. Don't give a crap. Um, it's a phenomenon. It, it has been for a while. There's a reason why the dude sold this company for Notch, sold this company for $2 billion. Um, it's, it's incredible. Uh, it's such a amazing tool. I don't even consider it a game. It's a tool where people create other games in Minecraft and other video. Like it's, it's incredible what people have engineered and I, definitely understand Minecraft. I, I get the appeal of it. It's just not for me. I, I, I just don't uh, have that artistic bug like that. Um, the one thing I do want to highlight uh, that's just a little story I'm going to talk about a little bit later, but um, it was released with a new trailer, uh, God of War release date on 420. Um, and it looks incredible. I'm going to touch on it a bit, a bit later, but that was kind of a cool thing to get a release date and a brand new trailer, three minute story driven trailer. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't worry about spoilers because it's taken out of context, so you can't really figure out what's going on anyway. Um, but yeah, the, the other big news story that I want to delve on a little bit further is Xbox Games Pass. Um, 
It's 10, 10 bucks a month, $9.99 a month, and it's been out for I think a year now, or maybe they released it at, they started at E3, I, I can't remember, but it, it's been, just call it, since at least E3, so six months at least. And it released to not middling fanfare, but just kind of like lukewarm fanfare because there weren't that many huge titles on it. And uh, while it does have, I, I was looking at the list now, it does have some pretty damn good games. I, I mean, I've already played all those. If you have an Xbox, you're sorely lacking exclusives. And uh, you've definitely played most of what they have to offer. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. There's some, like, I think 10 original Xbox games, a ton of 360 games, and a lot of new games that are really good for Xbox One are on there. But there was really never, for me, that incentive to get Xbox Games Pass to play other games. Um, Xbox, I have Xbox Live, and that is already such a great value. I've picked up a ton of games off that um, and played a bunch of games off that just for free. Uh, for free, right? For 60 bucks a year. And so there's never any incentive. But now Microsoft basically is in a position where they're trailing Sony really far now. Um, and they are now kind of trailing Nintendo. Nintendo is blowing everyone out of the water. Um, everyone is really latching on to that handheld because it's a mainstream device now. It's transcended video games, rather. It's become a phenomenon, okay? it's It actually, as of December, the Nintendo Switch has become the fastest selling console ever uh, out of anything, which is incredible because I, I thought the Wii was never going to lose that. The Wii just, I, I, I guess they couldn't make enough, <laughs> couldn't make enough Wiis to support the demand. But, uh, there's a couple of reasons why this is important, is now Xbox is releasing day and date Xbox One exclusives, uh, worldwide release. Uh, that is a superb value. Um, and, any, and it'll work retroactively, right? So it starts uh, in, I think, March 20th or 19th when Sea of Thieves is released. And you will be able to get the Game Pass for $10 and play Sea of Thieves. And to me, that's pretty incredible right you can you can basically i don't know how they're gonna control it but just say see if thieves comes out and i play it and play it as much as i want just say for two months so i spent 20 bucks and then three four months down the road another exclusive comes out but i shut it off do you know what i mean so it's like i haven't been paying for games pass i've just got it for that month or two months and then i shut it off and then i mean essentially if you want to work the system it's kind of like the old GameStop thing where you, you rent used games for a week. You got a week to play used games. Uh, it's it's like, hey, you can pay 10 bucks and get brand new games, or you can go buy it for 60. Um, I guess Microsoft thinking is, hey, it's, it's not costing us technically anything. We'd rather have you on the subscription model because that's two games, or that's 120 bucks a year. If we can get you to keep playing, and I think if you have that system, It'll encourage people to stick with games longer that have season passes and whatnot. Maybe it's going to be released over a six to eight month period. And then they'll have you on that. And what's 120 bucks is less than the price of two games. So in California, tax is pretty good. So basically for every game, you pay 66 bucks instead of 60. Uh, so that's 132 bucks a year just for two games. And this is 120 right there. As long as there's two exclusives that you like, I mean, it's worth it. I, I was actually looking at the games and there's several that I would play. They're not exclusives, but I haven't caught up on yet. Like I know ReCore was 40 bucks when it came out and, um, and you know, Mad Max is a, you know, I could probably get for $10 and same with ReCore, but, but it's like, well, I don't have to worry about it. I can just download it uh, and do it that way. I, I think Microsoft actually, this is what's so friggin' stupid and why people suck. Okay. Microsoft has basically just made it what their initial E3 pitch has been. That's how it is now. And it boggles my mind. It's the way they handled it that they botched it so bad at when they announced it at E3 that it was so bad that uh, nobody wanted to get on board. And now that's literally the reality of it where everyone, hey, it's easier just to want to download the games. And that's how it is now. And like, Everyone's like championing, championing them, right? Championing them, uh, where it's just like, yeah, that's the way to do it. Like, we just want to download our stuff. We don't want to have to go to a store. Um, 
one of the fall one fallout from this has been an Australian games company, the equivalent of like EB Ga or uh, GameStop, has uh, has like delisted all the Xbox consoles in like protest of it. And I don't blame him. I mean, really, the, there's so much less incentive. Do you know what I mean? To to go to a store now if you don't have to for exclusives, right? Um, but thought it was very interesting. Microsoft is like the low man on the totem and I think they have the best service out of all of them. I think they have the best console, frankly. And I just got a regular Xbox, but the amount of things that it does and these services that they offer for what for the cost and everything, I think blows everyone out of the water. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I've played two games on my, or three games on my Switch, two of them being Mario and Zelda. I can tell you I'm not gonna play it nearly as much this year. I don't get the fascination with, yeah, let's play everything on the go since that's not for me. Maybe more people do that, but I'd rather play games on at least a monitor or a bigger screen. That's just how I always have, and I'd rather look at something that's not this big if I can view something that's this big, right? So uh, for me, Nintendo's not hitting its marks, and I'm actually pretty worried about what this year's gonna look like and what's gonna release in terms of quality of first party titles. I almost think that Nintendo has blown their load um, with new games, and so I'm, I'm a little worried. But um, like I did uh, previous few weeks, I wanna talk about PlayStation 4 exclusives this week. And I just wanna go over, for me, like the, the exclusives that caught my eye and uh, highlight the ones that I'm interested in. Um, compared to Xbox and, P not PC, but Xbox and Switch, I think PS4's exclusive just are way, way above. Like, yes, I know Zelda and Mario were two of the best games of the year, but those were like, that was it. Yeah, you had ARMS, and I'm sure you had something else that was or Splatoon 2, but those aren't like seminal games, like uh, monumental games like Odyssey and Zelda, right? But I think Sony just, they had so many damn good games. I basically looked to go uh, buy a PS4. I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested, uh, PS4 Pro, to check out their backlog of like all the games I want to play. And there's 15 exclusive games for the PS4 as of right now that I want to play. And I just, it was like I was defeated. So let me go over games that are supposedly coming out this year. And these are like hard this year too. This isn't like a Death Stranding situation or Shenmue where it's like, sure, yeah. It's it's like these are coming out. Um, so it, this is alphabetical order. I'm just going and listing them off and I wanna highlight the ones that I'm interested in. And the first one is Days Gone. Um, I think this is actually gonna come out and surprise people. Uh, there's been a couple of gameplay demos and trailers and I think everyone's just been kind of like, oh, well, that looks cool. You know what I mean? Cause it, it looks like it's ripping off a lot of things, but we haven't really heard much. And I think this is gonna be one of those games where it gets a release date and like two months later it comes out and it's gonna be like high 80s, low 90s and everyone's gonna be like, man, that was a really good game. I think it's gonna be like a Horizon situation where everyone's like, well, how's that gonna play? And everyone plays it and goes, yeah, that was a great game. I, I, I do think of, from what I've seen, it looks fun, it looks interesting. And um, I guess that's all you can ask. I'm interested, right? Detroit Become Human. I don't really care about this game. It's a David Cage game. I haven't been into either of his other games. It looks manipulative. The writing is cool. I like the different aspects that you can take, but it just doesn't interest me, frankly. Uh, then we got Dreams. Looks incredible. Like Minecraft, not for me. It's about creation, like Little Big Planet and all this stuff. Uh, it looks very artistic and fun. Not my type of game, so I'm moving on. Uh, speaking of what we talked about before, releasing a new trailer and release date, God of War comes out on April 20th. Um, I'm a big God of War fan. I thought the third one was fantastic and the first and second were great too. Uh, I played the remasters. This one looks incredible. Um, I said as much, I think, on the last couple of shows, but to reiterate, uh, this is what's selling the system for me. Um, uh, not Uncharted 4, which I, I'm gonna love. I already know that. I've loved the first three, but um, this looks incredible and it looks like they're going in a completely different direction and I can't wait to play it. Uh, that might actually get me to buy like a bundle system or something or wait until Black Friday and get a cheap PS4 Pro and buy like 10 games and just you won't see me for a month. Um, the Inpatient is like a pseudo prequel sequel to um, Until Dawn. 
but it's only in VR. It's getting terrible reviews, but it's an exclusive, whatever. Uh, game, I've never played the first one, but this one looks damn good. Nino Kuni 2. Um, the, the style, the, the personality that this game has in the little bit that I've seen is incredible. Um, the characters look great. It just looks fun. <laughs> like there's some games that like you just look at and just go, man, I, I just want to play that. That looks fun. It looks interesting and um, good faces, right? Like uh, good, good emotions and good characters. Uh, I just want to play it. It looks, it looks jolly, right? It looks joyous. Um, Shadow of the Colossus. Tried to play the first one 10 years late on the PS2, couldn't because it looked so bad um, and it just wasn't my thing. And really upon seeing the gameplay demo for this, I, I'm going to say it and I'm, this is probably going to be like an opinion that not many people share. The combat looks boring. Like it looks like you climb up a Colossus, you figure out the pattern, you hang on, you kill it. And you move on to the next. I, I maybe hey, I'm sure they get more intricate as they move on, right? Uh, the gameplay that I've seen was seven minutes just taking down a boss, but it just it looked boring. It didn't look fun. It just looked boring. So I I don't know if that's gonna translate as well. Um, but for me, it looked boring. Um, Spider Man. I think this is coming out this year. I I, I really hope so. Uh, it's gonna be like a big Christmas game, I'm guessing. Um, but it looks good. I'm on board. The developer I I really like, Insomnia, Insomniac. Oh God, I'm forgetting. Um, it's the guys that did the uh, infamous games. So I, I, I'm, I'm whoever is creating it. I'm sorry, uh, but it looks great, and I have high hopes for it. It looks fun, and I'm into it. I love the Spider. Like Spider-Man 2 is one of the probably my favorite spider-man game but it's just there's something different about web slinging through cities and stuff like that and spider-man's unique abilities that are so fun and so endearing and it looks like it's telling a cool story and uh finally um not to leave it out since i know a lot of people play these games i still have it because they're ps4 exclusive but yakuza 6 the song of life looks great all these games look great i really want to play zero um again you need to get a system first to play that but i've only heard raves from people um and a couple of sources that i go to for video game reviews and whatnot they love it so can't really complain but but what i want to like hammer home with this talk about the ps4 exclusives is compared to nintendo and xbox this is what sony has been doing and why they're winning is there are one two three for I would say five or six games that I want to play this year that I know are sure things that are going to be excellent. These games are going to be fantastic and I don't even have to like, it, they're in the bag. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're like Sony exclusives, great product. And they had like eight or nine or 10 of those last year, which was crazy. That's what was so nuts about last year is that they had like eight of those. And it's it's an embarrassment of riches that Sony has been doing. And that's why they're winning is because they said, you know what? We have a games console and we're going to make the best friggin' games that we can. And they've been fulfilling that promise. I, I mean, assuming just say I don't get a, ga uh, a PS4 this year. That list, this list will easily go up to 20. 20, 20. Think about that. 20 exclusive games for a system that uh you know are only tied to that system that are 90 and above or like grade a what you would consider like fantastic games or great games that's a lot for a system when you think about that that are just exclusives that's a lot because you got to consider all the other games are mostly multi-platforms you know the grand theft autos and the 2k 8 sports games and all those big heavy hitters the call of duties that everyone buys right so to have like 20 games that are exclusive to one console after what, four years that are excellent? Like that's crazy. And and that's what they've been doing and that's why they're winning. And as much as the Wii is selling, or excuse me, the Switch is selling great, I, I think it will drop off. Um, I think once it, it's gonna do the same thing that the Wii did, it's gonna have this surge of really high popularity because of the novelty of it and the uh, popularity and the public lexicon, right? Like it's now a known thing. Um, that people get on it, but Sony's still just crushing it. 
and it's going to continue to crush it and it's because of the games i mean that's what you want out of a games console right so uh, unfortunately for me uh i've got an xbox and while i love it uh, i love the services that it offers I, it's going to be very difficult for me to convince me to upgrade to like the next xbox not an xbox at one x uh, because i've got a computer now and if microsoft's trying to combine them right but if if the PS5, say, is backward compatible with the PS4, like, that's, I will buy that the next system, and I'll just keep my Xbox One. That's the thing, is like, as time, my time becomes more limited, it matters, and all the great experiences now are on Sony systems. So, uh, this is coming from a guy who owns a PC, Xbox One, and Switch, and doesn't have a Sony system, and I can tell you, I'd be streaming a lot less like on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays and Saturdays, and I'd be playing a lot more with my PS4 if I had that. So um, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. Uh, this is, again, my name's GW Fox. This is the Model Gaming Show. I do this live every Thursday night. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at GW Fox, F A W K E S. And you can catch me uh, here. Monday through Friday mostly uh, at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time um, streaming or on Thursdays I do this show. So uh, as the sign-off has been sticking with me, it's I hope you enjoyed your stay. It's good to have you with us, even if it's just for the day. Have a uh, great evening, everyone, and we'll see you next week.